This is Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. I knew Brendan Thomas O'Toole as a pedicab driver, and I didn't like him. Common wisdom would say I should remain silent on this occasion, but if one of Brendan's survivors in time thinks I made the right choice, then I did. If not, I hope I'll be forgiven. Brendan was an owner-operator, and he had been around for a while. Greg said he had time, a lot like me, but more. I learned of his passing from a Penn Station 8th Avenue cab attendant who was able to describe Brendan with such precision, so I was sure I knew who died. Greg confirmed later when I returned my trike. Most of us rent our trikes, so our trikes look the way the owner of the trike wants them to look, but Brendan's looked the way Brendan wanted it to look. He had high handlebars, which looks stupid. But now I realize it made his posture cool compared to mine. I think of my reflection as I ride in the streets of New York City like an oversized kid riding an oversized tricycle. But Brendan's posture had style. Why did he patch his canopy with a variety of colored tapes? His wild hair would say any tape would do. And my guess, he would use duct tape color. But he did not color. He chose a variety of colors. This is a mystery. He had his own look. And best of all, nobody copies. Brendan and I exchanged no words, but a series of passing glances left me with a sense I knew all I wanted to know about Brendan. But then he passed through the 8th Avenue cab line. I was among the people standing in line and saying to me, Ethel, Ethel. It was silly. He tried to say it as if he was a reincarnated Jim Henson without moving his lips. He seemed to want me to be insulted, while others in the line found him charming, as I friend and rode away empty, as I did. At that point, I did everything I could to avoid him, looking past him as if he were transparent, but he wasn't. He left an impression. I could only guess his sweatpants were given to him in a high school basketball program, which his brother wore until they were worn, and Brendan wore until days. I imagine him always being behind on laundry, wearing his other brother's or roommate's clothing. I did not make note of his passengers, but I can imagine he attracted good girls interested in bad boys. It's easy to imagine a couple of women in a cab line whose friends never knew temptations, but yet they compared a pedicab ride with a wild-looking guy to a boring and forgettable yellow cab, and they found themselves in his cab, not really knowing why. Will I make a traditional donation in his name? Probably not, but what could I do? Anything asked of me. I would consider it if one of his survivings rode with me around Penn Station and let me tell about how we do our job and how Brandon did his job. If I got one of his many rolls of colored tape, we, New York City pedicab drivers, could mark our cabs in his honor, all my efforts to look past him, he was unmistakable. I think of him when I see my reflection in a series of glass windows along the New York City sidewalks, and I wish I could morph my posture into something that I wanted it to be, as Brendan morphed his posture into exactly what he wanted it to be. Already missed, and his memory will endure in the midtown streets and avenues for time to come. Dear kind survivors of Brendan, I am with you in your loss, and I stand ready in your recovery. Sincerely, Tom Duty. This has been Tom Duty, middle-aged American, living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would be duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, good evening, or restful night's sleep. Ciao.